In today's journey, we are giving a hardware overview of the components that makes up our brew pie. We will start with the core component, the Raspberry Pi, a microcomputer that is the brains of the outfit. Although it is no supercomputer, it is going to run the software that will be controlling the rest of the controllers. But not only that, it will also be data logging all of the temperatures and what the heaters and coolers were up to over those times across multiple Arduinos at once. So let's move on to how we plug all this stuff in. This comes with four USB ports and that's where we're gonna plug the Arduinos into. We're gonna use the ethernet port even though it comes with Wi-Fi. Avoiding Wi-Fi is actually why we're using the BrewPi legacy system in the first place. And despite there being four USB ports on the side, we recommend using a powered USB hub instead if you plan on using a lot of Arduinos. Up next is a standard size HDMI cable. We plug this directly into a capture device on our computer to get all of our footage of how we do things on our Raspberry Pi. Finally, we have the power supply. Although it may be tempting to use the USB cable plugged directly into a computer, it does not supply enough power for the Raspberry to function at full capacity. We use a 5 volt, 3 milliamp power supply with switch to make rebooting the computer much easier. And before we move on to the Arduinos, a final note about the Pis is that there are other form factors, but remember that the Pi Zero actually has a slower processor and will struggle to keep up with the Brew Pi software. We didn't try too hard, but we did have trouble getting it to recognize the Arduinos that we plugged into it. Speaking of the Arduino, we now move on to the control box. If the Raspberry Pi is the brains, then these are the guts that ingest the raw data and send it over to the Pi to be remembered for later. And if it looks a little ugly inside, that's okay because it's a prototype. And as we dig around, you can see the relay, which uses the three volt rail to control the 110 volt outlets. Otherwise the house wiring would totally fry the Arduino. Always make sure that your relay is regulated for the voltage of the appliances you will be controlling. Otherwise you risk a fire. A problem we've had in the past when working with cheap controllers bought off eBay. And now that Phil's done rooting around inside the innards, he only needs to disconnect the USB type B that supplies the Arduino with power from the Raspberry Pi, and our microcontroller is now free. The difference being the Raspberry Pi is a tiny computer with all the bells and whistles, whereas the Arduino is very basic, but very robust. No OS, no HDMI, none of that fancy stuff. Just the few lines of code that we put on it and whatever we plug into it. For example, these relays here. But it is important to remember that crap in, crap out. Meaning that just because you can save a few bucks on a component doesn't mean you should. And this is probably a good time to mention that we've disconnected this box from the mains. And the last component that we install into our control box are the thermal probes. It is recommended to use the DS18B20s, which actually just refers to the chip inside. As seen here, these are both the same probe, but bought from different suppliers. That's why we recommend buying all your probes in bulk at once. This helps keep discrepancies such as calibration, wiring colors, and fault tolerance to be more uniform. But whatever you do do, don't worry about making it perfect the first time. Just get it working, because you will always find something to complain about later. Like how Phil's currently complaining about all the cables that are constantly hanging off the box. So before we even finish this video, Phil has already started to upgrade all the thermal probes to use 3.5 millimeter jacks. This will require a multimeter to make sure that you put the right wires to the right place. And a soldering iron to make sure the wires stay in the right place. And to make sure we maintain continuity between all of our boxes, we are going to keep a sample like this around as a reference point. So some final quick tips. Use full-size, full-powered, authentic parts. It's not worth saving a few bucks if it takes a bunch more time to get the project done. Double check that your relays can handle what you plug into them or risk a fire. Just because something says that it's Arduino compatible does not mean it's going to work for this project. Even though they share a lot of components, they unfortunately don't work due to the USB controller installed on them. We have not gotten the legacy to recognize anything with an FTDI USB controller on it. You will want to make sure that it has the authentic AT Mega 16U2 chip instead. But if you absolutely must go clone, 
Be sure to use something that's not trying to rip off Arduino's look completely. It's actually open source, so it's completely legal for them to make clones. It should still reference UNO, which refers to the form factor, and R3, which refers to the revision. But there is still no guarantee. Our method is to use genuine to develop and clones to deploy. But before we go, we'd like to thank Lee at BrewPyRemix.com for making such a simple installer to use this amazing program. And if you're worried about which kind of SD card to use, don't worry about it too much. As long as you avoid the lowest tier crap cards out there, you should be fine. We use the Samsung 32GB as our go-to card.